You don't want any trash over here, right? These are former convicts going, no, no, we don't want anybody else to come in, you know. So we're really strict about immigration. And in fact, it's kind of like the Switzerland of the Pacific, you know. Australia is almost 96% Caucasian, and it wishes it was 100%. Oh, they're going to pull me out of this country. Uh, it's a very dry country, which is why everybody drinks. And uh, most of the country gets 10 inches of rain, and all the women get less than 10 inches. <laughs> and, and running, running right through, right through Australia is this, is this Tropic of Capricorn, which is this 20-mile band of really serious people with thick eyebrows, cooks who look like Nixon. You know, the <laughs> and uh, Australia is, uh, it's just like Texas. It's uh, overrated. <laughs> no, Australia is like Texas. It's the land of a cowboys out back with Bush, and they don't have a president either. <laughs> Actually, the, the Queen of England is the titular head. Weird animals in Australia. For instance, the kangaroo, which is really the most highly developed woman in the world. Because it has this pouch and it doesn't have to carry a purse. And then there's the koala bear, which hangs out in the eucalyptus trees and eats leaves all day and is incredibly stoned. This is true. This is really what those koala bears are. So they're the most developed hippie on earth. And then, of course, there is the bingo, which is a very social animal. It's very flat and has kind of a checkerboard marking on it. And uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people sell these bingos to make money. Okay. Um, Australia, yes. Uh, well, it's an island, which is really a peninsula that's let go. And uh, it kind of floats a little bit southeast of Galveston out there, and it's surrounded by two oceans, the uh, Indian and the Pacific, and it's surrounded by islands like the Tasmania, New Guinea, New Zealand, New England, Pogo Pogo, of course, where Quail just visited. In fact, Quail was in Australia recently, and he managed not to spit up any of his Gerber caviar. We were very <laughs> pleased with that. Very good. Okay, Australia, Australia wasn't part of the original landmass. You know, Tondawanda land that then went on to split into Laurentia and Dementia. No, Australia was this huge <laughs> meteor that fell into the earth and killed all the dinosaurs. It's a little known fact. I learned this about Australia. Okay? So, uh, Australia, it's really a land of a lot of sports. And, um, you guys want to know what Australia looks like? This is a true yeah. story. When the, when the astronauts went to the moon, I think it was Bean. Bean said, he's up there, and he said, you want to know what the moon looks like? Go out and look at your driveway. Oh, so poetic. I love <laughs> So, you want to know what Australia looks like? You go to Lake Travis and throw in a white sponge, and that's Australia. Let's look just like it. Oh, Australia, it's not just the home of Captain Kangaroo or the Hula Hoop or Ting Tong, Willy Willy Bing Bong. No, no, no. Australia gave us Eva's Googalong and uh, Spanky and our gang and Linda Ronstadt and Meryl Streep and Mel Gibson and Mel Blank and Mel Torment and Mel Yellow, as a matter of fact. All of them are from Australia. And sports! Sports. You can't think of Australia while thinking about the sports because they've got cricket, whack it, squash it, smash it, toss it, tuck it, kick it, wick it, duck it, whip it, whack it, and bowling. Bowling is incredibly big here in Australia. In fact, over half of the world's bowlers are right here in Australia because no other country would have them. It's true. And Australia is so flat they don't even bother to go to a bowling alley. They just go out in their lawn and do bowling, which we'll show you later. And we will also have Australia's number one filmmaker on the show. We'll be meeting the mayor of Adelaide. We'll be uh, seeing the number one cooking master of Australia. We'll be meeting the Madonna of Australia. These more, thousands of more people. Thank you very much. And now let's have a big hand for the mayor of Adelaide, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're Mrs. Berry. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. It's a fabulous city here. It looks a great deal like my uh, home city of Austin. Thank you. That's bloody wonderful. Thank you. Well, you're welcome too. Well, um, what uh, have you been to Austin ever? No, Austin. Mm -hmm. Where is Austin? You're welcome. It's over in in Texas. <laughs> have you been to to Texas or the U.S. Texas? ever? Texas. No, you've never been there. No. Oh well, you're very welcome to come visit us. Bloody because wonderful. you've been Thank very. You. <laughs> Very gracious here, and I'm enjoying it. And I just got off the plane this morning, so I'm a little, a little speeded up, so to speak. But uh, it's a beautiful city. Call up the Sheila's there. Sheila's. Sheila's. It, where in Austin? No, Sheila's. You have Sheila's here. Oh, lots of Sheila's. Bloody, Sheila's. bloody wonderful. Sheila's. <laughs> Sheila's. Bloody Sheila's. Is this women on their periods? What? What's a Sheila? Oh, bloody wonderful. Bloody wonderful. Are they bloody Mary? <laughs> women. <laughs> women. Okay. Well. Maybe you have something to give me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, actually, I do. I've got the key to the city somewhere. I was expecting it because, um... It's, uh, what's on the Oh, here it is. Oh! See, you, I was really... Please feel free it. to visit the city whenever you want. The key to Adelaide from the mayor. Let's have a big hand for the mayor. <laughs> 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 Um, well, now, um, we did an interview with William Dente, who, as you all know, is the world's foremost expert on operatic sopranos and is the man who single-handedly brought culture to Australia. Let's take a look at that. Wonderful. Oh, William Dante, the world's foremost expert on opera. Furthermore, he's the one personally responsible for bringing culture to Australia. He's expecting us. We're here. TV, TV, here. Hi, William? Signorina, what do you want? Well, I'm here to speak with William. This is TV, TV from Austin, Texas. We're here to talk with William. William? Guillermo not here. Go away, please. No, I don't want to talk to Guillermo. I want to talk to William, please. William? William? Yes. No, William. Guillermo not here. Not here, lady. No, you don't understand. I have a scheduled interview with William Dante to talk about opera. I'll just... Bijou, I am so glad you come. You know, I see your picture on the TV all the time. I, oh. I have it shipped. My, my special, uh, what you call, uh, attaché brings your fresh tapes every week. Oh. I watch your show Thank on the you, television. William. Bijou, you want something to drink? Oh, please. Please, I and a cookie. You want a big cookie? No, I had all, what, seven meals on the plane because of all the time changes. I'm really not hungry. Oh, right Arturo now. brings them to you. Make your tummy good. Oh, Maestro. Thank you. Uh, maestro. Oh, grazie, Arturo, grazie. Should I refer to you? You know, what exactly is a maestro? A this maestro. Man, the greatest man in you Australia. You have a nice big Australian oh. cup for you. I buy that here oh, at, uh, my. Down at the harbor, at the harbor uh, cutlery. Maestro, oh, one gypsy ah. cutlery. Harbor. I thought everything was big in Texas. I had no idea. Oh, no, no, no. I had seven meals on the plane. Australia bigger than Texas. Yes, it is. This you bring these steel cookies. I like these cookies, no? Mm. Look like Mickey Mouse ears. You see? Oh, this is wonderful. It tastes like hay. Yeah, it's hay. It it's for hay. you. It's for well, it's you. It's the national tea of Australia. Hey, you. You know. I got just what you want. You know, and the hope. thing about opera that confuses me is that... Uh, oh, no, no. I do. Is that... Um, I don't quite understand what they're saying. Who cares? Who cares? Well, I don't no. care. I mean, I'm... No, I'm, you no. don't. Opera is not, it's not the, what we say. It's what you hear. It's what I... It's, well, I hear things I don't understand. Bijou, it's a nest of nightingales awakening in the throat. Oh, 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 oh. It's a nest. Oh, I hadn't thought of it like it's that. It's a thrill. A thrill. It is a, it is a thrill to be here, you know? Yeah. You listen now. This is perfection. Perfection. going to see two of the remaining Aborigines left in Australia as they present some of their music for your listening pleasure. Forty fat koala bears in a eucalyptus tree singing in sweet harmony a song about a platypus duck named Bill Come a waltzing to Australia with me. Waltzing to Australia, waltzing to Australia. Oh, come a waltzing to Australia with me. Waltzing to Australia, all about a duck named Bill. Oh, come a waltzing to Australia with me. Once a happy hobo came up on a small pond. 
for the shade of a mesquite tree. And he sang as he watched, and waited while his pot boiled. Now my wall sings to Australia with me. Wall sings to Australia, wall sings to Australia. Ooh, come my wall sings to Australia with me. He sang and he watched, and waited while his pot boiled. Now my wall sings to Australia with me. Down came a gopher to drink at that small pond. Jumped the hobo and grabbed him with glee. And he sang as he stuffed that gopher in his brown backpack. Come on, waltzing to Australia with me. Waltzing to Australia, waltzing to Australia. Who'd come on, waltzing to Australia with me? And he sang as he stuffed that gopher in his brown backpack. I'm a waltzing to Australia with me. Up rode a harness bull, mounted on his holly trike. Up rode the other pigs, one, two, three. Where's that Jimmy Grover you got in your brown backpack? I'm a waltzing to Australia with me. Waltzing to Australia, waltzing to Australia. Who can I waltzing to Australia with me? Where's that grinning gopher you've got in your brown backpack? Come a waltzing to Australia with me. Up jumped the hobo and sprang into that small pond. You'll never take me alive, came a sound. And his ghost may be heard as you pass by that small pond. Why did you tie me kangaroo down? Waltzing to Australia, waltzing to Australia. Australia's number one cooking master. He's kind of the Julia Child of Australia, except he's a man. And his name is Theophilus Demetrius. Is that correct? Do I say it correctly? Demetrius Triandopoulos. Excuse me, Demetrius Triandopoulos. No, no, no. Demetrius in a James. You can call me Jimmy. Triandopoulos in a Rose. And what are you going Jimmy to make Rose. for us? Jimmy Rose. What are you going to make for us? Did you? First, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. May Recipoli, a woman, American woman here in our country. There a are many Sheila. Greeks here. A Sheila. A Sheila. What are you going to Yenekamu. make for Yenekamu. I want to show you the you Greek way of life. <laughs> Yeneka means is a woman. A woman. A woman. Yes, I understand. There are many names for women in Can Australia. Can I introduce you to the Greek way of life? Oh, please do. <laughs> there are many Greeks in, in Melbourne. Third biggest city. The uh -huh. Greeks. This is our Greek Uzo. Have a little. I love some. Make you happy. Make you happier in Australia. Wait, 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 do it the Greek way. Put in your right hand. Esse. Oh, Esse. <laughs> opa, 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 opa. <laughs> we throw it against the wall, but not here. Opa, we're free. Opa, we're free. Good, good game. Okay, now I introduce you to a little Greek music. Please do. Oh, it's a romantic music. Just like the experience itself. I want, shall we dance? Just very emotional music. This remind me of Athena. I was born in Athena. Right hand, what do we do? Come out here, please. Okay. Opa! Opa! Everything is Opa! Oh, I'm so happy to have you with you. Oh, I love the smell of your outfit. I see your Greek way of life, the Greek way of love. Maybe you've heard about it. Oh, well, I'm right on camera. Let's do this with a cooking show. What are you going to make for us today? This is a... 
very yeah, important dessert, baklava. Ah, dessert. I this is what it looks baklava. like at the end. Aha. Uh -huh. But the secret, you see the many layers of dough. Yeah. Here's what we start with. <laughs> filo. 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 That means leaves. Filo. Means leaves. Because <clears throat> these leaves are very thin, mm -hmm. like thin leaves. Very simple <laughs> recipe. These oh, your armpit odor. Uh, no, that's my uh, cologne. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Not as much as I, Oh, we lost something here. Not to worry. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Okay, there's just basically three ingredients. You've got your butter, mm -hmm. syrup. Would you like to chop the nuts? Chop the nuts. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Can we get a closer for this? I have a knife somewhere. <laughs> There you go. I'll make the syrup. All right. You put the nuts in here. The nuts in there. Should I put them in now? Are they ready? Yes, they look great. Great. <laughs> now we mix. This is the filling. This the is the filling. filling. Okay. First we brush with butter. The pan is... Notice the shape of the pan. Is there something significant about the shape of this pan? <laughs> <laughs> it's rectangular. Rect oh, of course. Now take this very thin leaf. Thin leaf. Put it in there. Yes. Brush again. You do the next one. Brush it. Okay. Gently. Harshly. Any way you do it is fine. Great. Okay, we do that for about ten leaves. Ten leaves. We don't have time on the show. No, we don't. We always need to speed it up on television. We're acting as if we've had ten leaves. Then we here. sprinkle this. This is sprinkle the filling. On. All right. Mm-hmm. Can you put a little ooze on there to jazz it up? Yes, that's good. a good idea. <laughs> You're very Greek, very free. <laughs> very, very free, very free. You know, I, I'm sad I had to leave Athena. You asked me why. Why? I didn't like the way I was being reared. <laughs> <Great job. laughs> but I brought my brothers with me, both ah. of my brothers. I didn't want to they leave my brothers them. behind. Do they smell like ah. ah. Those are bad oh, Greek this jokes. Is getting very good, very good. So is this putting you in the mood, it. Bijou? To eat baklava? No, I think we need music. But it, this is the final product. What do we use? This is what it looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like. Have a like. taste, Bijou. See? This becomes this. What are you going to do on your next cooking show? See? Voila! Fantastic. Thank you very much. Bijou. Mm. Ah, it was a pleasure. The ego, the food. Uzo and the food and can I play the music and the music because no we are going to go to one of the most famous. One of Australia's most famous resources, it's babes. Our own reporter, Steve Nichols, live in Australia, hunting for the babes. Let's have a look at this. You're a TV TV reporter. Some of you might have remembered me from last week's show. I'm sort of a big time guy down on his luck. You saw me back in LA, NBC. That's right. I moved on from then, from there, down to San Diego. After San Diego, I made a career move to Canoga Park. They fired me there. Well, I resigned there, and then it was Austin, Texas, and TV, TV. I did that exciting music special in the hallway of Antone's, and now they've flown me to Adelaide, Australia. Wonderful, isn't it? The babes, the bods, the bathing suits. Let's face it, these Aussies aren't known for their brains, and we came for the beefcake. Hang around with me a few, for a few minutes, and I'll give you a slice of Adelaide, Australia that you won't forget. So how long have you been living in Adelaide? And tell me a little bit about you, yourself. I've been living here about 10 years. Um, I moved here from Southern Australia. And I am just living and working and swimming and playing with my daughters. And that's it. These are your daughters? I can't believe you have daughters. You can't be over 22. Oh, but I am. Where did you get that bathing suit? Is that bathing suit? I got that. The store down the street. I'm sorry. The store down the street. 
plastic busted off the store and asked my daughters for their opinions and they gave it to me and I took it. <laughs> yeah, I remember an old song, Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini, where the girl was afraid to come out of the locker room. Tell me how it felt in that store when you first put on this black little beautiful bathing suit and you had your daughters there with you. Uh, it was a bit embarrassing, but then I decided to just go ahead and go for it. We've already entertained the men with that beautiful blonde Kira. Here's, here's a good looking guy. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Brian Lesser? Keeling. Brian Keeling. And uh, are you a student? Uh, no, actually, I'm just in a band mostly. I don't go to school anymore. Can you, can you stand up so we can get a shot of you in your bathing suit? We're kind of doing a study on bathing suits. <laughs> Ladies, you're going to like this. This is a good looking guy. And he's got Kira's, Kira's bathing suit on, I think. Uh, it's a band called Water the Dog. And are you a guitarist? Or? Uh, I'm so drums. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about Australia. It's hot. The people wear small bathing suits. The water's beautiful, and so far I say we're batting a thousand. This is Steve Nichols, your on-the-spot reporter. This is the kind of assignment I like, and you can see for obvious reasons why. I haven't seen this much oil since I changed the oil on my Monte Carlo. And this woman has got a tan that contrasts so beautifully with that white bathing suit. But I'm going to get her name now. Let's get to the important things. What's your name? My name is Patty McMahon. Patty, who are these, uh, well, guys with you? And what, what kind of lines are they feeding you? Ah, another good friend of mine uh, that I'll party with. Oh. <laughs> what, what is your name, young man? Uh, don't touch the mic. I don't want you to get electrocuted. Jim. <laughs> no last name, Jim? No, I don't have a last name. Jim. His name is Jim Rogers. Okay, Jim Rogers and Patty. And who's your friend over here? Can you get in a little bit closer? Yeah. Brian. Brian Alper. All right, well, you guys look like you're having a good time. Tell me, why exactly do you come to this place? Because uh, of all the people. It's a lot of fun and there's always something happening. And the, wi the women are hot. Brian got to the point, that's a man I like. He doesn't mince his words. <laughs> this is Steve Nichols. Let's get back on the beat. Okay. I got a group of five or six young, good-looking men here from Adelaide, Australia. <laughs> and uh, they're either a street gang, a fraternity, or just maybe unemployed. Let's find out what the hell they're doing here. Name, please, and your reason for being here. Hunt Golden. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Hulk or Hunk? Hunk. Hunk. <laughs> and, uh, is that Golden Hunk when you put your last name first, or? No, it's Hunk Golden. <laughs> and what's the question? <laughs> what are you doing down here? Tell the truth. She got the babes. <laughs> you don't have any work, school work to do that you could be doing? I don't go to school. <laughs> nobody, nobody goes to school. All right, I'm moving closer to this beautiful young woman, but I'm going to hit this guy first. What's your name, son? Jimmy Geritol. <laughs> okay. Jimmy Geritol? And, you're, and I'm here to check some <laughs> rays out. <laughs> okay, we're, we're panning right, and I think we're going to see the object of their affection in just a second here. I want to get in closer for this shot. I'm, not, I'm no different. What's your name? Denise Thompson. <laughs> what was that? I didn't catch that. Denise Thompson. And your phone number? No, I'm not oh, I, did, I was just kidding. I wouldn't want that on TV. So how many times have you been here? Uh, a couple times. Are you new to Adelaide? Yeah, what's Adelaide? <laughs> well, I mentioned earlier that Australia is crazy about sports, and the most popular sport is lawn bowling. And uh, I'm going to give a demonstration of how they do that. Uh, they start out at the younger age to do this kind of lawn bowling, they break a tennis ball, and they bounce it down there, hoping that it will get into one of the bowls. Oh, I guess not. When they grow up, though, they move on to the bigger and better, the actual lawn bowling with your basic bowling ball, and take it, and Yeah. How close? I don't know if that mine just bowling away like that. Now I'm going to go learn something more about Australia first here in mine. And we'll be talking to Peg Leg O'Banion. Let's have a big hand for Peg Leg in here. Hey. All right, good night, Mike. How's it going to be, Now, uh, you know about Foster's Bear. We've been shipping it to you blokes here in the States. And it's one of our milder and smaller bears. But, uh, well... Here's a more decent sized uh, one we got here is uh, Platypus. It's a mighty strong ale that, uh, well, not to put your folk blokes down, but I don't think you can take it. Uh, like a dry one, BG. Oh, sure. I got a little of uh, black stump. 
Black or junk? Yeah, it's one of our finer. Tasty name. Yes, it's uh. Is this a beer and ale or a stout? Uh, we're not sure. Oh, it's kind of okay. Yes, yeah, so. This is what, uh. sheet then. And, uh. Yeah, let's see, what else we got here? We got, uh. Billabong wine. Billabong wine. You know the Billabong, yes. It's a little, no. uh, water hole where the, uh, the sheep visit sometimes, and we, uh, get the water from the Billabong. Oh, it's like a sheep sewer. Yes. But, uh, has, a, has a bouquet like an Aborigine's armpit. And, uh, uh yeah. we serve it on the uh, Punky Slim's Bar, which is, the owner is me, uh -huh. of course. What else we got used here? Used to be Slim's Bar, but now I'm a little punchy. You're beyond Slim. So I'm a Punky Slim. And, uh, Bingo. Dingo, I'm not sure if it's a beer or a wine, it's a little of both, and it's, uh, only dingoes can drink it. Only dingoes, okay. That's a uh, wild dog. And, of course, a uh, koala wine made from eucalyptus leaves is quite narcotic. Quite narcotic. And, uh, eucalyptus, that's why koala bears are so, stoned uh, all the time. stoned all the time. They lay around on the koala eucalyptus trees. Can't get the and, uh, well, can't you may think if you open it up, though, it has quite a bouquet there. You maybe okay. shouldn't do that. Oh, okay. And, uh, of course, everybody knows this one. Oh, yes. Well, that's the one we shipped to you. We think we can take that, but uh, that one's empty. Well, after all this anyway. liquid, uh, I suggest we go to someplace very, very dry. Again, this is one of Australia's most famous landmarks. It's kind of like right there in the middle of the country. There's nothing, nothing, nothing around except this huge rock. Ayers Rock. We're going to have a look at Ayers Rock. My home. My home. Are you from there, Ayers Rock? Oh, Alice Springs. Alice Springs. Yeah. yeah, it's just there in the middle of nowhere, just sitting there. Kind of lumpy, lumpy out there. It's just a magnificent site. There's no vegetation around it or anything whatsoever. It's just uh, Ayers Rock, and uh, it's quite a wild place. And now what we're going to uh, do a little from our Australian motif. We're going to... Uh, have a comedian on. He's very special in my life because I brought him with me all the way to Australia from Austin, Texas, my own personal dentist, Mark Sweeney. Let's have a big hand for Mark Sweeney. It's nice to be back in Australia because um, I was here uh, in November on a bicycle trip for the Bicentennial. Their Bicentennial was last year. We rode 700 miles from Melbourne to Sydney and um, it was um, ex exciting to say the least. I'm just now growing some hair back on some parts of my body that, uh, <laughs> from being on the bicycle all that time. You can understand that. One thing I've learned from my two trips to Australia, and it's nice to be back here in Adelaide, is that uh, there are 15 million Australians, and there are two things that Australians seem to be able to do, all 15 million of them, that none of, none of my American friends seem to be able to do. One of those is to drive on the wrong side of the road. They all know how to do that. <laughs> The other thing is they all know how to have a nice day. They all say, good day, mate, and they mean it. She's all right, mate. That's just the way they are. One of the drawbacks I see in, in, in Australia, being a dentist especially, is that the, dentist, the dental care level here is really the pits. I mean, they get teeth knocked out playing cricket at a young age, and they don't replace them. It's kind of a status symbol that they use, and uh, they're just not into cosmetics very much at all. I figure that... Uh, the United States wasn't into cosmetic dentistry very much for a long time either and it seemed like the cosmetic breast surgeons got started and within 10 years we were into cosmetic dentistry. From my trips to the beach here in Australia, from my trips here to the beach in Australia, I think it may be a long, long time from the looks of some of the women over here before we ever get into cosmetic <laughs> breast surgery, so we might as well forget cosmetic dentistry. As Bijou said, she brings me over whenever she's taking a trip like this. Uh, I am her own personal dentist. It's a it's a great job. Um, you know, most of the times when she's off the air, I'm spinning in her mouth. It's a. It's a job <laughs> I used, to travel, I used to travel with the Osmonds. Uh, that wasn't a very good job. It was uh, um, like being the Maytag repairman. <clears throat> I mean, the White House proctologist gets more action than I did. But then, every day it was, uh, Hey, I'm a little bit country. Hey, Doc, you going to clean them up a little bit so we can go procreate a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> My Donny Osmond imitation. Actually, I, I more prefer the Australians, the people who look a little more like this. 
<laughs> Good night, Mike. Are you all right, Mike? <laughs> okay, I guess we got to get to dentistry a little bit. You're wondering, what's a dentist trying to do being a comedian? Well, you may think I'm a little strange, but you'd be a little strange, too, if all day, every day, the main question you got asked was, do you have gas? <laughs> now, everybody likes that over here in the United States. Nobody will go to the dentist without it. The only problem is, over here, they seem to have a great natural preserve of gas, and so uh, so they don't seem to find any need for it in, in the dentist's office. You wouldn't believe the amount of baked beans they eat, breakfast, lunch, supper. It's just uh, one of the staples of their diet. As dentists, I guess we got to in, get into dentistry a little bit. Um, we get asked a lot of other stupid questions, like the patients that come in and say, is it going to hurt? Well, of course, you know from being at the dentist, every dentist's response is going to be, of course not, you'll just feel a little pressure. <laughs> I know the difference. <laughs> One of the other things we get asked, being problem solvers as dentists and being uh, in need of being psychologists in some cases, you have people come in making demands of you, the things that you just can't deliver. Everybody wants lighter teeth. We mentioned cosmetic dentistry earlier. That's how I met Bijou. Um, and just last week, we had, we had a lady come in. She was unhappy with the color of her teeth. She said, Doctor, I want my teeth to look lighter to everyone, and they're yellow. What can you do about it? Well, after studying her case for a little while, we finally decided um, the only solution was for her to wear dark suits. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Enough of the dental jokes, and now back to Bijou. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, as I was saying, Australia is well known for its wild animal collection, and we're fortunate enough to have with us the zoo director of the Adelaide Zoo, Joan Embryo. Let's have a big hand for Joan Embryo. Come on out here, Joan. There she comes now. She seems to have something living around her neck. What is this beast? Oh, it's, it's, this is, a, it's this wide. Is Australian art. I heard this is a very fashionable item for taking women to wear a boa. A boa. A boa. Huh? A boa. Yeah, I know one of those kind of parties, but they are a lot of Texas women running around with boas. So this is a boa, an Australian boa? Australian boa. Uh-huh, and it's going like that. Is that significant? That's true. Uh, <laughs> is it going to strike when it does that? What does that mean? Why is it doing that? Uh, take a look at you. It didn't like some of your Australian jokes. No, not many people did. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay, too. So, um, uh, Joan, how long have you been with the zoo? Oh, God, ever since I can remember. Kind of born there. Kind of born there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, no. Is, is this a, is this a poisonous snake here? Is, is this a oh, well? It's beautiful. Hi. Yeah. Really. I, I look forward to seeing it as a belt around my waist one of these days. It's beautiful pattern. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you bring us? I brought a, a genuine uh, one of the one of the dingo. I'm looking at the Is that a dingo ass during the Well, <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> one of the rare <laughs> Australian tailless. Dingo. A tailless dingo. A tailless well, I gotta dingo. get a rat hurting dog. You know, the first thing I saw was this tailless ass staring me in the face. And what is this dingo bred to do here? <laughs> oh, you see, it herds rats, and uh, it has many different colors. Look at that. Yes. Black and gray and white, and, and that brown. Is that to kind of like fit in with the outback, which has nothing there except gray and white and beige and brown and ears? Sure. That's, I mean, that's, that's what it looks like. This is what the Australian outback looks like, basically. And uh huh. Yeah, it has a flea. <laughs> oh, there. Oh. Wow, that was an exciting look at the wild, wild, wild animals of, uh, yeah, can it do any tricks? Oh, oh, that's right, I think you have one. I, I better let it go because we do have a, a rat here. You may you give me a hand with this. Um, I don't want to lose Oh, right, let's give it a hand. Okay, okay. Uh, this is one of our, uh, it looks like, looks like you're a Texan rat, but it's, it's actually a, pick, pick the thing up in the camera. Bring it, bring it over here. Put it on the, put it on the desk. Right here. Oh, there we go. Now this is an Australian rat. This is a very unique rat. And why is it unique, Joan? Well, actually, it's not a rat. Uh, most people look at it and say it's a it's rat, a rat. But, but you know, uh, it actually, it's a, it's a rare a Aus Aus Australian mink. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a mink. A, yeah. Oh, I look it's forward a, to it being around my it's neck. It's a rare Australian mink. Oh, it has a lovely sheen to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's it for the animals from Australia. That was around the world. Uh, look at all uh, three of the most popular animals from what I can tell oh, in Australia. You, 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 you want to wear it? No, no, not until it's dead around my waist. Oh, no. Okay, let's have a big hand for John Emery. <laughs> And now, of course, uh, one of the big factors of being in Australia is the fact that uh, we are in the Southern Hemisphere. So, of course, there's an entirely different night sky above us. And let's take a look at the constellations here in the Southern Hemisphere. There you can see some of them now. <laughs> can you make them? Can you uh, see what some of these are? Here we have the Southern, the Southern Methodist Cross. Can we make that out a close-up? Yeah, here's the Southern... It looks, if you stand, you know, you can almost see the football with a slash through it. We have that. Here we have the famous uh, uh, pubic triangle. It's one of the most well-known constellations in the Southern Hemisphere. And here, of course, is the South Pole, right there in the middle. And uh, down here we have the Lone Ranger mask. People look for that at night. And over here we have what appears to be kind of a rip-off of the Basic Dipper up in the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, here we have raindrops keep falling on my head constellation and people also look for that in the night sky and now I think we're uh, due to talk with the filmmaker um, and uh, let's have a big hand oh excuse me first we're going to go back and have another talk with that man who brought coffee to Australia let's go look at that interview with William Dente I played the hardest thing ever written for soprano, the mad scene from Hamlet, you know, Ophelia, but it's a little different in there. She, she, she jump in the river, she float. It's very, very difficult. To float, yeah. uh, float. And you sing while you float, you... Oh, 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 o
I understand you have a clip from one of your earlier films. Well, that's right. I brought it with me. It's from Pink Flamingos. You ever see that? It's an underground cult film, but it got me a lot of attention. And could you? And I, I was able to go from there and make a more commercial type of film, which you, it's just about to be released. It's called Ruse in the Mist. Rose in the Mist Rose is the one you're on now. It's about, yes, that's what, it's about, I had to live, I lived with kangaroos. Uh -huh. For about three years in the bush. Did your wife know this? Or? Uh, I, well, I divorced my wife. And then you went to the kangaroo. Well, I married a kangaroo. Oh. <laughs> you married a kangaroo. Yes, that's right. And yeah. you show that in the film, the, the well, evolution we, of this relationship? Uh, yeah, it shows the whole series of events. We, when we were married, there's a bit of the, the wedding, and then after the wedding and uh -huh. our eventual split up, <laughs> she, split up, she caught me with my hands in someone else's pouch. And oh, I, yeah. well, it was, I, you know, you do what you can. That's I understand all that this, this is causing quite an uproar in Australia. They it's didn't really want to release well, it. Well, there were some people, that, you know, the people who were the environmentalists were opposed to it because they felt like we should just leave the kangaroos alone. You shouldn't be living with them. Well, there's something to be said for that. I must say that. Well, at least not sleeping with them. Well, not sleeping with them. That's a, that's a touchy subject. And I think this particular <laughs> clip we're going to see is like a dream sequence. That's right. It's a, a dream I was having while I was living with the kangaroos. A okay. dream. It's, I can explain. It's got a lot of symbols. Okay, in it. if we could have that clip, and uh, Ian, I'll tell you what's going yeah. on. Here it is. Now here's. Okay, this is the opening of the dream. Now that's a, a an Australian symbol just went across there. Uh -huh. It's a hobby horse. A hobby we horse. use that in a lot of my movies. Okay. And uh, here I am with uh, uh, of my friend. Well. Yeah, you could call them that. I, I call that's, them that. You call them that here, don't you? Sheila's. Yeah, uh, yes, Sheila's. Yeah. Oh, no, what's this? This is, uh, that's a dingo. That's a dingo. I didn't, I didn't want to see one. That was my pet dingo. Kind um, of an albino dingo, I think. He, uh, yeah, he was all... Oh, was look, all. his ass. That's the first thing I saw of the other day. Yeah, Something that's about a, a dingo. Well, we have a, a more common term for that. We call it a dingo butt. A dingo butt. It's a dingo butt, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that looks you like an incredibly... say that to people. You say, get out of here, you dingo butt. And you know what, Ian? It's just about that time. So out of here, Jimbo Butter. It's been fantastic. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm just, I'm just so honored to have these guests on the show this evening. And now, because Australia is an island surrounded by water, every year they have their annual fish art exhibition. And uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. See what the Australian visual artists are up to. Well, as you all know, last year uh, Australia celebrated its uh, quadricentennial, and every year Australia has its national fish art exhibit to celebrate the fact that it is surrounded by water. And right here we see the uh, silverfish by Tom Allen. And here we have Fish Story by Hill Snyder, a very famous Australian uh, artist who works in three dimensions. And here we see Garfield, of course, which symbolizes Western imperialism. And you can see that the boat... It could subside, and on the boat it says, The Garfield in her window concealed the cruelty in her mind, and I don't believe she'll be rolling that window down, which of course has deeper implications for the economic future of Australia. Here in Garlic Gar by T. Paul Hernandez, another famous Caucasian Australian artist, we see the fish with its uh, roll inside, which of course is symbolic of the nourishment we all get from fish. And right next to it, we have a fabulous work by Kanula Olick. She's one of the few orig aboriginals in this show, and she is uh, chosen to call her work String of Fish. And you can see that the uh, brown fiber conflicts with the metal mesh, which is, of course, the struggle of all of Australians aboriginals among the Caucasian. Now, here we have a, a fabulous work by Jill Bedgood called Past Miracles, Current Politics. You can see on one side the water with the dirt and the clean towel, and then the plate, and inscribed on the plate is a biblical passage about Jesus and the fish and feeding people. And over here we have the upside-down empty glass, the sand and the dirty towel, and the plate is reversed. This is a comment on Margaret Thatcher. Australian artist Robert Steinbomer has interpreted the everyday anxiety of Australians live with, the fact that the Japanese could come and invade, and that is what is symbolized in this work. This one's entitled The Shrine of the Technocratic Gilgamesh, and it's by Janet Baron Siebert. And what she's dealing with here is, of course, you may remember the ancient Australian legend about Gilgamesh, 
who was a former soccer player who washed up into the shores of Australia. And here he is before he found the shores. It's Gilgamesh Underwater. Next to it, we have Fish Dreams by Billy Mom, and we see the, the skull of their basic Australia on the bottom. It's, you might have noticed uh, throughout our visit here that all Australians resemble this face. There is really only one face for Australians, and he's on the bottom. And piled on that, of course, are the fish interspersed with the blue balls. And the blue balls in Australia is a very painful condition. Next to that, we have Laura Telford's work called Land Roving Escalator Fish Looking for Distinct Abnormal Fears. And this is more of a woman's fear work. You'll see the, the fur on the steps and the uh, circular opening here. And I, I think I shouldn't venture any further into what this work suggests. The excitement is growing. We're here before the opening of the official exhibit when thousands of people will pour in from around the world to take in this fabulous exhibition on fish. And what could be more appropriate than the national food of Australia, the fish cracker, with they, which they invented. And here we are back in Adelaide, Australia, talking about Australian cuisine, which, as we know, is uh, practically, um, well, it's not really talked about around the world. I mean, have you ever gone to an Australian restaurant? And the reason why this is is because, if you remember, Australia was founded by convicts. And what do convicts eat? Bread and water. So you find that over the years, um, they have slight variations on this bread and water routine, like they might have a pancake and throw it in wine, but that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> However, recently, uh, because of the seafood, they, they're quite clever with shrimp. And what we've had is we've had uh, some of this shrimp marinating in some of that narcotic uh, koala bear juice or something that that other man introduced, and uh, it's quite, quite good. And what we're going to do, of course, is uh, have a little... Uh, shrimp on a barbie. So what you need to do is you just women, women get, that was really rude. When women get skewered, the leg kicks right on the side. Now you want to take some of this marinade and just kind of brush the barbie, make it so it won't stick, just put it like flat it right on there. And also she's been marinated in some suntan lotion. And then what you do, you just put the shrimp right on the barbie. <laughs> and uh, See, lots of times we have kind of, kind of can on Barbie, but the men of Australia really frown on a shrimp on a can, and you can understand why. So that's it. That's your basic shrimp on a Barbie, and uh, it's quite a tasty dish. And now those uh, Aboriginal musicians are back, and they're going to do another song for us. Let's have a big hand for the musicians. Aboriginal! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
understand that is the first time that that aboriginal music has ever been heard by anybody outside of the tribe. It's a stirring moment. And I would like to reflect upon that. And now we are going to go all the way from the very, very earliest origins to Australia to the number one pop star in Australia. Australia's Madonna. She sold over 57 million dollars in albums last year. Let's have a big hand for Helen Whitaker. <laughs> Who is the good person to the fair? Who is the good person to the fair? Who is the good person to the fair? 